the Great Reset, the, the Adrenochrome Pedophiles. Make it make sense. Let's try to move into the 21st century, people. Oh, that's real good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hollywood Live. We've got another great show for you today, and we're so glad you're joining us. Because with me is she, and I'm going to put my glasses on so I can really make sure I read this. She is an actress, she is a journalist, and she is host of her own show, The Political Series, The Gen Zone. Say hello to Janae Lucas. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And I apologize for it because I was so impressed. I was like, I got to get her name right, Janae, Janae, right? Because it looks like Jay Honey, because I know everybody. Yeah, that's my Instagram name. <laughs> <laughs> well, lady, I have to ask you, first of all, congratulations on all of the stuff you've done. Um, and we, I want to get into some of that, but let's talk about the Gen Zone, only because we're a week away uh, from the midterm elections. This show, I understand, was bred, it came out of 2020, uh, when we realized that that 18 to 34 year old block of voters had the most at stake. What was it that made you say, okay, we've got to do this and we've got to do it now? Well, first of all, thank you so much for um, congratulating us. And definitely it was the fact that in 2018 midterms, um, Trump was able to flip so many states and they were able to change so many things. So when 2020 rolled around, a lot of people became involved because we had a more vocal president who was tweeting literally everything and speaking. He was communicating to my generation. He was communicating with the public more than any other president had. And not only was he doing that, but in communicating, he was showing his true colors. Um, he was encouraging division. He was encouraging slight racism. And so that got my generation involved. And I said, all right, if we can do something to help, let's do it. And so it started in 2020 and we uh, held an event in Atlanta, which was a voter registration event at the Trap Music Museum. And there was a lot of people that showed up and we realized, okay, politics, people are interested in politics. So let's find a way where we can make it engaging and fun like we did this event. And we'll have all the people um, becoming informed and aware about everything right. that's going on. Right. So like I said, we're a week away now, less than a week away from the midterm elections, which could, you know, are, as far as I can see it, our democracy is being held in balance right now. Is that block of 18 to 34 year olds, are they going to be out voting? I definitely believe they are, especially because a lot of people my age were looking forward to the student loan forgiveness program. And I don't know if you're aware, but there are six states in the country that are taking Biden to federal court to fight against us being able to receive our student loans. Me specifically, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Nebraska is one of those states that is doing a federal appeal so that students cannot receive the student debt forgiveness. So I think that that's something that's definitely driving Generation Z um, to the polls is the fact that they're trying to fight back on the student loan debt forgiveness and also abortion rights, yes. women's rights. That's something that is definitely important to people my age, because although there's no one that's pro-abortion, the right to choose Thank is you. definitely prevalent and it's fundamental. And the fact that that's something that I know that Republicans are going to try to take away from us is definitely disheartening. And there's something that needs to be done about that. So we we all need to come together and show up at the polls so that we can we can make sure that we secure the right to our bodies. Exactly, you said something important. Uh, that is, you know, the whole idea, that a lot of this is semantics about women's reproductive rights and what is our bodies and how we should control it. Um, you said something important that nobody really wants abortions. And I, you're right. They've made this the thing about, okay, pro-abortion versus, you know, pro-life. No, everybody's pro-life. Uh, people who get abortions, women who get abortions are pro-life. It's not about that, you know. Uh, so I think the whole semantics, if we could even start educating younger people and changing their attitudes about what that means, 
you know, to be because you're pro-life doesn't mean that you are necessarily thinking, okay, we should not have Roe versus Wade, that women should have control of their body. So is there that kind of education taking place? Yes, absolutely. We talk about that on the show. And we also mention the fact that it's not just the accidental case of someone, you know, getting knocked up and deciding that they don't have the necessary finances to take care of a child. There are instances where there are women who suffer medical complications and they get far along in their pregnancy where they have to choose or decide their life or the child. Mm -hmm. So taking that from them is not okay. And there's also women who live in certain states where they do have those medical complications and they're forced to continue the pregnancy term to give birth to a still baby because they can't have their uteruses evacuated. Yeah. So it, it it gets deeper than that. And then there's also the case of rape and incest. They should not be forced to, to carry um, something that's so traumatic and to yeah. live with it. We saw that case, of course, in Ohio, and there's still that's still playing out. OK, exactly. affirmative of affirmative action. Let's talk about that, because that certainly affects uh, the, the gen zone as well. Uh, what position and how are you guys positioning yourself on that issue right now, which of course is at the Supreme Court. And again, you know, we're looking at a situation where all of a sudden it's not important for, for people of color to go to college. Let's put it like that. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? The thing is, is that they're, they're trying to make it seem like um, people of color are going to college for lesser degrees like basket weaving or you know like like small stuff like that and so what they're what they're trying to do is they're trying to produce more doctors more lawyers more um engineers mm -hmm. more of those jobs that aren't necessarily considered liberal uh or the liberal arts more necessities um but it education is definitely necessary and it's vital but the fact is, is that if we have to take out all of these loans and then the job market that we're promised is not at the end of our graduation mm -hmm. term, then we're stuck with this debt for the rest of our lives or for many years, we're trying to pay back this debt. So it, it's not about whether or not it, it, there has to be a balance. Yeah, yeah. No, I I absolutely agree. Let's talk about, because there's just so many issues that we can talk about. Uh, misinformation you know the gin zone is really you guys have grown up it's in your dna the whole idea of the digital you, you were born during the transition into the digital age that we now live in um it's had a lot of advantages it's had a lot of disadvantages one of the biggest disadvantages when it comes to politics and just life is misinformation you we started out talking about trump back in 20 or rather 2016 um, that misinformation is still being spread. And a lot of it is spread on the network that your show is on, on Fox. Uh, Fox Network has been in, and I know, I, you know, we don't I'm bite keen. the hand that feeds I'm us. definitely keen. All my favorite people. <laughs> okay. Harris Faulkner, Tucker Carlson. I like to call him Tucker Carlson. Sorry, can I? Can Oops, I so we, that's okay. We can, I, I'm with you on that one. But, you know, <laughs> what, what can, what can you guys do about the spread of misinformation? And do people actually understand that there is a truth there is a truth there's right and there's wrong that hasn't changed it's just how people have started manipulating that absolutely. what do we do absolutely so we definitely address that um on the gin zone we like to keep it all the way 100 and that's something that we state often um misinformation goes all the way around it's on the republican side and the democrat side mm -hmm. uh just yesterday we discussed the fact that on the, on the prior episode we applauded joe biden president joe biden for pardoning um the crime federally the crimes of uh, marijuana possession right and mm -hmm. it was something that everybody was talking about oh look he's doing great he's doing great mm -hmm. it's a great look for the democrats leading up to the midterms to mm -hmm. pardon you know, uh, cannabis related crimes. However, when you do a little bit more research, you see that nobody is in federal prison for petty marijuana crimes. There are actually other crimes attached to their record mm -hmm. if they're in federal prison. So knocking off that one marijuana possession mm -hmm. uh, charge is not necessarily going to free them and return them home to their families. So that was something that was definitely manipulated 
by the media and they were trying to uh, misinform us on what exactly the pardon was. But it even goes further than that. One of my favorite segments on the Gen Zone is our QAnon conspiracies, right? Yeah. It's all these followers that follow QAnon and they believe wholeheartedly that Trump is the chosen one and that he lost the election because that he didn't lose the election. Right. There was mm -hmm. voter fraud and election fraud and so many other. They believe that Hillary Clinton uh, drinks baby blood. They believe uh, that JFK Jr. is still alive. They believe so many different things. And so we have this segment where we share what it is that the QAnon conspiracy of the week is just so that you are aware of the um, the falsehood that is being spread throughout the country so much so that we were following QAnon before uh January 6th that we decided to go to DC and to actually be there for that final Trump rally and we got so mm -hmm. much footage and interviews from QAnon followers Trump supporters we were there during the insurrection and we had that footage and that's because we were on to the QAnon people and following what they were saying was going to happen. So we were able to be one step ahead. And I think that that's important. And that's why we have that segment so that you guys won't be blindsided or think that right. it's out of the blue. Sounds to me like you should have been participating in those hearings. Oh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, seriously. when they seriously. say that he didn't incite a riot, I literally have footage of him every time he mentioned Pence or Biden, the whole crowd booed. Like, we literally we left the rally early because it started getting a little uncomfortable. They started chanting bullshit, bullshit, and they started chanting fight for Trump. And it started getting like, the, the yeah. atmosphere started getting more violent and uncomfortable. And we were like, okay, let's remove ourselves from the situation. And by the time that we walked from the park that the rally was held at to our hotel, they were already at the Capitol. By now, everyone has seen the same footage from mainstream media to social media of the attack on the Capitol. To remind our viewers, we were there at the protests long before the insurrection began. We wanted to give the people an open platform. What were they aware of that we weren't? Ooh -wee. Here at Be Woke News, it is our job to keep the audiences awake and aware. So let's see what they had to say. Do you feel like the rallies and protests um, are making a difference or yeah? I, I think so for sure. I mean, the number, you, when you see how many people are out here and you compare it to Biden events, I mean, it's, it's just a joke. This it, is, it's very obvious who the country selected as their president. And when you just get out to these things, you talk to people, it's just, you, you see there are a lot of people that know what reality is and, and they're out there at these Trump events. We need to have election fairness and election integrity. Without that, there is no country. You have no country at all if you can't have basic fair elections. Right. Straight up. That's why you're here today. We do the best our part to help this country. We don't know how to do. We just pray God constantly and come out on the street to show people we spoke for. Uh, the <laughs> Uh, I came to watch him uh, speak, it's my day off, so uh, there's a lot of good energy here, good vibes, and a lot of people that uh, just want to see our country uh, thrive in the Orange man, good. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts on how people portray um, Trump supporters or Republicans as being erratic or not peaceful? I think that's a load of crap. Sorry to say it that way. But uh, you look around here and I say, I mean, I watch people pick up trash. Yes, there's trash. I mean, how many people do you think are here today? Uh, I think we're well, we've exceeded a million. I mean, you look around, you look at the number of acres that are here. I think we're truly over a million people. And I've watched people pick up trash. I watched uh, people, they drop a glove. Somebody stops to pick it up. My name's Joseph. Joseph, all right. Can I call you Joe? You call me Sleepy Joe. Joe. No, no, Sleepy Joe. Our country is under attack in one of the worst ways ever. And we have to stand up every single day and speak the truth, act out the truth, 
And as a woman or as a man, it is your obligation. If you are an American, you have to make a stand and be willing to make a sacrifice. And sacrifices are not easy, they're uncomfortable. But you, when you love something or someone, you do the right thing. And you do what makes you uncomfortable. And if you're not challenged, you're not growing. If you don't want to be in America, be. We're so tired of the bull that's going on in America now. We believe that the uh, election was stolen. And, you know, I, I'm for fair elections, but when it's stolen from you, then we're really upset. I'm upset. And to support our president, he's been a good one. He's done more for the blacks and for the Hispanics and for regular Americans. Regular American? I'm just a regular. I'm just a regular. What's a regular American? One year ago today, in this sacred place, democracy was attacked. <clears throat> simply attacked. The will of the people was under assault. The Constitution, our Constitution, faced the gravest of threats. Outnumbered in the face of a brutal attack, the Capitol Police, the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, the National Guard, and other brave law enforcement officials saved the rule of law. Our democracy held we, the people, endured. We, the people, prevailed. In that small amount of time. Mm. So uh, the fact that it's a question of whether he incited a riot is insane to me because I'm like, we have all the evidence that he definitely egged them on and encouraged that behavior. Have you actually thought about turning that over to the, the government? I mean, to, you know, to the House? You know, I, no, but it seems that whenever we post our footage on social media from that day, they always flag it and take it down. Like immediately, like a few days after January 6th. Yeah, Instagram, TikTok banned the Gen, the Gen Zone page, so we no longer have a TikTok. Um, wow. Yeah, every time that they say it's against community guidelines. So I'm not sure what that is about because honestly, what we have is not even as bad as what they show on television. Like on mainstream news, they actually show the Capitol windows being beat into. Exactly. They show the rope hanging from the Capitol. Like they show way worse stuff than what we have. So I'm not sure. I mean, if they subpoena me for it, I, I do it. But when it comes to us posting the footage, we always seem to get flagged. Hmm. Isn't that interesting when all these other people are posting the misinformation stuff and they're not getting flagged? What do you think about uh, Elon Musk taking over Twitter? Oh, man, I I just feel like there's so many other things that he could do with $44 billion than to buy a social platform. Like, we have plenty of platforms. Um, I feel like this is a power move. It's more like a, a prideful move as if like oh I'm one of the richest men in the world I can buy what I want um so that my views can be pushed on to other people so uh, we joked about that and we were like um you know he's probably gonna bring Donald Trump back to Twitter and what happened on January 6th yep. is a prime example of why he doesn't need to be on Twitter and I've also been seeing some of the um tweets of people using the hard n-word um mm. using that as an excuse like oh elon owns twitter now so now i can say whatever i want people are abusing it and then i also hear the other side of it where people are saying oh those are hired actors that are doing that just to create the division and an uproar because he now bought the platform but again i just feel like with so many other problems that are going on in America, I don't feel like that was a priority to, to put $44 billion behind it. And and I'm wondering, should we all, I mean, why are we all still using the platform? You know, this is a guy, people don't realize he's from South Africa. Uh, he's being sued by- He's not American. <laughs> no, he's not American. And he's being sued by many of the black employees that were so abused- At Tesla. Uh, up at Tesla for 10 years. I mean, the, the kind of abuse that, that the black employees at Tesla, they were shut off to themselves. They would, you know, have, it, it's just beyond some they of the stuff. They also have they a lawsuit. Um, the company Tesla, I don't, I don't, well, 
since he's the founder and the owner of Tesla, it affects him as well. But they also have been sued for not like a, approving minority people for for the car. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true, too. So every time I see a black person driving in a Tesla, which, you know, we do see here in L.A., I'm like, honey, you need to go take that back. <laughs> And you need to just go take that back. I'm going to say it right now. You yeah. will not see me in any Tesla ever, ever, ever. But all that being said, what, you know, what a blessing you are to your generation and to all of us right now. Um, I, and there's so much going on. And I know you actually have another career. You're an actress as well. Uh, do you get any time for that these days by doing the show or what's going on with that part of your life? Absolutely. Actually, I had an audition this morning. <laughs> that I had to, yeah, I, I have to make the time. You know, it's it's uh when you have a passion, you're not gonna let time, you know, kind of stop you. You you'll make the time for it. So yes, um, I've been able to now that the Gen Zone has been picked up on Fox Soul, it's become uh, more consistent, and also we have deadlines now. Mm -hmm. So. It, in a sense, it's kind of made it better for me because now it's in a fit schedule because we have to hit certain deadlines and shoot by certain days. So that helps a lot with the auditions that might come in or or any commercials right. that I might book because now I have a schedule that I can work my acting around. What would you say to everybody about not only watching the, the Gen Zone right now, but just about getting out and how important it is for us to get out and vote? Oh, your vote is so important um, because it affects every aspect of our daily lives. Like I can't express how much um, use your 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 power. It was only in 1968 that it became mm -hmm. illegal for black women to vote. That's that. That's not that long ago. No. That's my parents age. So you mean to tell me that my parents, the year that they were born, that was the year that black women were legally able to vote that's insane and the fact that we have that right alone should you should exercise it and then if you want to decide on on how to live your life and the and the policies that dictate and govern your life you should definitely vote um I'll say just one one quick thing about the the ballot in Nebraska because I vote in Nebraska still mm -hmm. um they have the, the special issues ballot where you decide whether a judge should be retained or not. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting that there actually is a petition to remove this judge as well, but there is a judge in Nebraska and um, her name is Shelly, Judge Shelly. And she has been not for the people. And Nebraska is a Republican state, so it's hard to really get people to be on board for you know democracy mm -hmm. but um this judge in particular there was a friend of mine who we all went to college with and uh, at Creighton University and he was accused of raping um a white girl I'll just say it. he was accused of raping a white girl and we all just couldn't believe it because one it wasn't part of his character and two at the time he was on the basketball team but he was injured he had a torn ACL how can you physically put yourself onto somebody with that kind of injury? You can barely even walk. So right. they uh, not only they kicked him off the team, they snatched his uh, diploma from him and everything. And they plastered him on the front paper and all the news cycles in Nebraska as a rapist. And only for a couple months later, um, he didn't have the money for a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He had to stay in prison for five days. And this was all based on the word of somebody yeah. right and right. it was this judge that did that and a couple months later there were some donators um some donors at Creighton they donate money to Creighton they were able to listen to his story and hire him a good lawyer and it turned out that he was innocent they found evidence to you know um, define his innocence mm -hmm. and it was like okay there's no apology where are all the news cycles now what about the papers now? Like once mm -hmm. that damage has been done to you, especially as a black man, how can you come back from that? And that judge right. played a key part in that. There's no way that he should even been in prison for as long as he was prison. Like he stayed in, he's sorry, excuse me, not prison, but jail for five jail. years. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And then also she only gave probation to a young man because he was under the influence. He was under drugs and uh, alcohol, but he slit a woman's throat unprovoked he slit her throat and she felt like oh well because he was under the influence he wasn't aware of what he was doing so she only gave him probation and this woman has to live with this scar and the trauma of being attacked every day of her life while this man is out on probation so I just wanted to share that story for my people in Nebraska that might be watching because we need to get this judge out Oh, honey, there are so many of those types of judges. And unfortunately, that's the other thing. The Supreme Court, you know, that's a, the, the other level of that. But those are the people that totally affect our lives, like the story you were just saying. Exactly. And I know here in Los Angeles, we have the same situation. And I always tell people, I'm like, don't vote for any judge that, unless you know their background, because they can make a huge difference in your life. Huge. Exactly. Whether you're criminal or not, or whether you ever, you know, whether that you ever get arrested, they still make exactly. it. Whether you're a life. criminal that get arrested or you're a victim, like right. you will never see yourself being in the position of being behind a judge in court or a judge determining um, whether or not somebody is guilty in a crime that right. they committed against you or or a crime that you're accused of. So it's like the the judges are really important. They really are. You're very important. We love you so much. Oh, and, you, uh, you know, good luck and, and congratulations on the show. Everybody can catch you on Fox Soul. Uh, that's where you can find the show. And where else? Um, It's Fox Soul. So it can be on the Fox Soul YouTube channel, Fire Stick, Apple TV. If you have the app or on the website, it's right. also on uh, Roku. It's on um, Tubi. But it's Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much. Uh, Everybody check out the Gen Zone. You really, and get out to vote. Just everybody get out to vote. Please. Have a great day. Thank you. You come back and you you talk with us anytime. Okay. We love you. Okay. (laughs) Everybody else out there, have a great day. Don't forget to take care of yourself and somebody else. (laughs) 